People always ask me what I do. I write and self-publish. Now this flipogram uh, includes uh, some books that I have out. If you search my name on Amazon.com, you'll find uh, both hard copies and Kindle copies of most of my books. I had to come up with a mission statement because people were like, uh, "Huh, you know." So WIPA, Whist- Whistle and Phil Independent Publishing Agency. I'm an independent publisher, not just a writer doing vanity publishing. I legitimately represent multiple authors and artists. We make a good living, one that is financially increasing all the time. This is a business. It's not just a hobby. I don't just write books because I want to. It's just a hobby. Just to hear myself. See myself in print. It's, it's more than that. I'm helping people. Helping other people. I'm making money here. This is business. This is my livelihood. About um, a decade ago. Whenever I started my first uh, YouTube channel. Six months into it, my sister uh, made the comment, um, why don't you just put this stuff together, you know, uh, compile them, write down these stories. And Well, the first daddyhood came out of that. It's a good suggestion. I put together the first daddyhood book. wasn't much of a book. It was really small. Um, but I collected a bunch of things about uh, being a parent, being an active dad, and you know, things I learned, and it wasn't like a how-to book. There are plenty of how-to books out there, but I don't think they're comprehensive. They'll never be a comprehensive one, because every kid's a little bit different. So, my book just told it how it is, how it was for me, you know. I I had some pointers, but it was mostly just, just stories. Just stuff that I thought was funny, and other people thought was funny, some of it. And I just put it together. Well, the first Eddie Hood book came out of it. Like I said, it wasn't this book. This title, this cover, is for the expanded edition. Improved and expanded. Um, Maybe three or four years after that, I put this together. A lot of new material. The first one was just a little dinky booklet. I... This how I thought about it, but I expanded it and actually put together a book on daddyhood. Need to come out with that one because kids change a lot, and I have teenagers now, so I need to come out with another book because I've got a lot of different thoughts rolling through my head, but hadn't happened yet. At the same time, I did my first daddyhood book. I I did a little uh smaller it's called when a geeky guy grows up i like alliteration i thought that was fun um i consider it a booklet because it was just 10 or 20 pages just stuff about me you know funny stuff about being a geek and you know ha ha stuff put it out concurrently legally technically it was a book According to the United States Postal Service, anything over eight pages is a book. So it was a book, just not much of one. My first real, my, my flagship, if you were, my flagship book is a Levels of Geekdom. I read the cover a little bit recently to Foundation of Phil because it's it's a foundational book. It's, um, yeah, I collect, I... Copy and pasted uh, Daddy Hood and when Kiki grows up and added, I don't know, maybe fifty percent. I mean, it's this is this is a standalone book that included those two, but it it's like kind of where I came from type story. You know, I talk a lot about when I was growing up, you know, and it makes makes people laugh when I tell the stories. Geeks, um, like everybody, everybody has pet peeves, things that bother them. But geeks have weird ones. I've said some stuff, they're like, you know, my wife's like, why does that bother you? And 
I called to my botherations. I started making a list. And she's like, does everything bother you? I said, no, not everything. So I had to get a book together to prove things that make me happy also. I call this book Botherations and Happy Things. I never produced a hard copy. I haven't actually printed it out and seen the hard copy. It was just, I just did Kindle kind of ebook of this. But I list and I do reflections on a lot of things that bother me. You know, and then I counteract it with more things that make me happy. Some of them are normal, but more more than likely, most of them, actually, are unusual. Are weird things. Because, you know, <laughs> emotions help determine who we are. Because how we react to emotions determines what kind of person we are. My first parking book is titled, Every Church Needs a Parker. Volunteering in the parking lot has been a big part of my life, and there are other books floating around my head that will be getting written down. This was the first one that I wrote down that actually, you know, made it to print and stuff. But with a lot of reflections, and even even some how-to section with pointers about being a parking lot volunteer, working in the parking lot, what it means... But, like my other books, psh, I can't help being funny, because I'm just a hilarious guy, I really am. I mean, you can't tell by, by like, my, bleh, my monotone and straightforward voice, but I'm a pretty funny guy. This book, Embracing Uniqueness, on the cover you see me and, and, and my oldest daughter, which this picture was actually three years ago or something, so she's older than that, but, um... This book is more of a serious take on a lot of the things that I started rambling about in uh, Levels of Geekdom. Because there, they were just funny. Uh, the, this is more of a serious take on how, you know, we tend to be put in boxes. We tend to be stereotyped. And we don't belong there. That's, that's the basic theme. We don't belong in a stereotypical box we are all individuals. We are all unique in a different way, and we've got to uh, embrace it. <laughs> That's the title. You know, we've got to uh, to accept and cherish and let our freak flag fly. Come on, you know. If we're crazy, let us be crazy. And uh, Sarah is a was a was an instrumental. I mean. A lot of the things that, uh, the truths that I'm learning about uh, stereotypes, she can emphasize and she told stories about also, and I include them in this book. So it's, it's like the, the next level of geekdom. And here are some tentative nonfiction titles for upcoming books that I'm working on. But I haven't written. A Fur and Feces, with some Phil's Pet Stories. Political, in, in, political Incorrectness, with some Phil Rambles about the issues. Q, 133 Questions and Answers. Who Done It? 17 Famous Figures with Backstories You May Not Know. Mud Pie, The Making of a Man. Was Santa at the Manger? And other Christmassy reflections. Not an exhaustive list at all. I've, I've been thinking about lots of things. And these are just the non-fiction things. I, I have so many fiction titles I'm working on. Um, there is a sci-fi book series of books that have been rolling around in my head for literally years. 20 years at least. And I've written down stories and but I haven't I haven't finished the book. I haven't finished the first book in that series. And that's what I'm working on now. Or one of the multiple things I'm working on. Um is, is that series that's the money maker. That's the cash cow. That series because it's just like I'm gonna go to bed I'm shooting for a bestseller with this, with these books. It's it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. 
But, um, hey, you know, this is the foundation of Phil. You've got to get the foundation. You've got to find the non-fiction stuff before you get to the fiction stuff, I, I guess. Everyone has a story. Most stories should be books. A lot, of, a lot of really crappy books are produced. And my mm, reason of being, uh, what is it called, raison de vie, is, is helping people put together good books. Books that are worth reading. I have a background in, uh, in English. I was an English major in college. So I, I, I've done a lot of writing, done a lot of proofreading, editing. I know a little bit about grammar, spelling, that sort of thing. I studied also visual arts. It's been 10 years since I professionally put that to much use, but uh, creating covers, do graphic design. We're going to, I'm going, I am going to help people promote and put together good books. It's going to look good, it's going to be good. Message me. That's what I'm saying. Message me. Facebook, text, email, whatever. Get in touch with me because I will help you pull out, pull that story out of your head, out of your heart. Slap it down on paper or slap it on the computer screen, whatever. We're going to get it published and I'm going to help you promote. Um, because, hey, you know, everybody deserves to have something out there.